noose ends March 19th, 64, Kenston, North Carolina. Dear, Dear sis, sis, I find it exceedingly dull here as the town is completely deserted by all its respectable inhabitants. We, the officers of the noose, live in a small house on the street, which is the terminus of Colonel Washington's Avenue and about a quarter of a mile from our future home, the nuisance. <laughs> I am afraid that name will prove but too appropriate. Her iron fixings are not done, her engines are not ready, her quarters and storerooms are not near ready, and last but not least, the river is falling about 12 inches a day, and we will have to trust to Providence for another rise when the vessel is finished. Our two guns are mounted, and we drill the crew every morning at 9 and every evening at 5.30 o'clock. The vessel herself will be very close and warm this summer, but we will be richly repaid for all inconveniences if we are permitted to succeed in capturing Newburn and Roanoke Island. Love, Love to, to all. all. Remember me to Miss Clark, as ever your affectionate brother, R.H.B. C.S. Noose, Kenston, North Carolina, April 28, 1864. Dear Sis, I have had bad news to tell you this time, even worse than I anticipated when I wrote last. The, the river, river has, has fallen, fallen and the C.S. Noose is nearly high and dry on a sandbar just below Kenston. The river had fallen about six feet when we got orders to go down, and there was scarcely water enough for us to cross the obstructions. We nevertheless started down last Friday, and had proceeded about a half a mile when we grounded on a sandbar. We tried very hard to get her off, but her great weight and the strength of the current were too much for us. Besides, the river was falling at the rate of three-quarters inch per hour. The troops were here ready to join us in the attack on Newburn, and we were all expecting to take the city and sink the gunboats without much trouble and to have a fine time afterward. We were destined to be disappointed, however, and I suppose, as everything happens for the best, we ought not to grumble too much. But it does seem hard to be sorely disappointed after expecting so much. If I leave here, I hope to go to Mobile, then I can stop and see you all. Ever your affectionate brother, R.H. Baco. Raleigh, North Carolina, March 27, 1865. My old home, the noose, is gone. All the troops were withdrawn from Kinston, and the Yankees, 18,000 strong, came upon us, and not having any prospect of being relieved before our provisions gave out, and being in a narrow river where we could not work the ship under fire, after shelling the Yankee cavalry for a little while, we removed our powder and stores and burnt the vessel. We fortunately saved our clothing and are very comfortably fixed at Halifax, North Carolina, on the Roanoke River, where we were waiting for something to turn up. The, the hardest, hardest part, of the, part of the evacuation of Kinston for me was to have to leave without seeing my darling little sweetheart. Your future sister-in-law is now in the enemy's lines, and as they have occupied the town in force, I'm afraid they will be very troublesome. Yes, sis, I'm engaged to be married to a dear little sweet soul, Miss Fanny Bryan of Newburn. I wish you could know her and her family. I think without exception it is the nicest family, taken as a whole, that I ever saw. My Fran will be 18 in November, five years younger than I am. I wonder when I'll be able to marry. I hope soon. Next year. There are a great many wounded here from Aversboro and Bentonville, where we whipped the Yankees, part of Sherman's army, pretty badly. Sherman is now at Goldsboro, and Johnston is trying to force a fight. I hope in less than two weeks we will fight and whip him in a general engagement. Then the tide will have turned in our favor. All you overrun people must keep up your spirits. The soldiers are very cheerful. I have to close as I have to send this off at once. Kiss Alfie for me and give my regards to Miss Jenny and Mr. Clark, ever your affectionate brother, R.H. Bacon.